Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing tonight? It's another late night front porch video that I didn't plan on making because listen, listen Linda, my new channel, my new channel, my seventh channel, Peter's Reality TV Recaps and Opinions is popping off. It's popping off, it's popping off, Linda. It is at, I'm so excited, it is at uh, 4,600, over 4,600 subscribers right now, and I have filmed three videos over there. Um, I'm gonna be filming two videos um, on Tuesday. I'm filming this video Monday night, late Monday night, but this channel has me doing some major work, okay? It has me doing some major work because tonight I had to watch the second half of Big Brother and then I'm getting back into uh, Below Deck Mediterranean before the new season comes out. So I'm trying to catch up and get done with season five so I can watch six, season six and seven next week before the new season comes out. And then all these people uh, have requested that I watch Love After Lockup. So I just started watching it. But I was like looking at all this stuff to do with Daniel Prada and I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna make a video. I've got a Jacqueline Hill. Well, listen, I, listen, Linda. I have got all these videos to make tomorrow. I've got my whole list of my plans for Tuesday. Hold on a second. And I have a Jacqueline Hill video that I want to make and all this kind of stuff. So um, I might I might save that till Wednesday. It just depends on how I feel. It depends on how long this video goes. Because, you know, I start off these videos and I think they're going to be like 20 minutes long and they end up being like, you know, an hour. Now, I'm sitting out here. I'm very cozy tonight. Okay. Got the crickets with me. See, they're here. I got three candles lit right now. This one is this lemon one. It's not fantastic. Um, but this one is fantastic. This is one that my husband's friend gave him. It's like so nice. Has this little twine on it on the end. Isn't that so cozy, isn't it? And then I have this one that I got from Trader Joe's. And I love these candles so much. So $3.49. And you can get them online and they are totally worth it. Okay. You can also get them in store. And I'm also having a little bit of a Diet Coke. Now, we're getting close to Halloween. If you are following my Instagram, I'm posting like, re reposting pictures of Halloween left and right over there. But we're also getting close to Christmas. So I brought out my Christmas corksicle cup, not sponsored, and a Diet Coke. And this is kind of my time to have a little Diet Coke with you guys and uh, have a Diet Coke with you guys and just have a little, have a little conversation with y'all about some things. So for those of you that do not know, um, I made a video, posted it on Monday, um, it's just another manic Monday, oh lord, let's talk about Daniel Prada, oh boring, um, but I posted a video on Monday about the fact that Daniel Prada, um, addressed the Colleen Ballinger facts, as he re refers to them, um, at the very end of his vlog about painting his house. He uh, put it at the, the, the last six minutes of the video. He snuck it in there in the last six minutes of the video. Now, um, it was brought to my attention by several people that I got a fact incorrect in my uh, video. I didn't wait three months to come out and address it. I didn't act like, who, what, it's not happening. Like all these other influencers that people wanna say, Peter, you demand things from these people and you don't practice what you preach. So I literally turned it around within an hour of it being posted and um, I posted an ap apology to Daniel Prada and asked some questions in that apology that I was confused about, but um, took full responsibility for it, apologized to Daniel Prada for getting the misinformation uh, or getting the information wrong and putting misinformation out there that was incorrect. I, I do want to say this. I think it's interesting, you know, um, and this is not to pat my own back because I have witnessed other drama commentary channels do the same thing. I didn't monetize that video. His video is monetized. Um, and my video was about the same length that he talked about Colleen Ballinger. I think it was longer, actually. I think I talked, my apology video was longer than him addressing the Colleen Ballinger situation, right? And in my video, I had said, I didn't understand why he could come out with an hour-long video addressing Gabby Hanna, but he had to sneak this in to the last six minutes of a vlog, okay? Which is so typical of Dan and Prada. It's kind of what he always does. And um, so, just so when people want to say that I don't practice what I preach, I put out a um, unmonetized video that was 
longer than his part talking about Colleen Ballinger in a dedicated video to Daniel Prada apologizing to him. Okay, so I did what Daniel Prada couldn't do, and I did what I have asked Daniel Prada to do. So I absolutely fucking A, practice what I preach. Don't say that, okay? I turned around within an hour. Didn't take me three months to sit on it and think about it with all the facts out there. I turned right around and did it, okay? So that I can hopefully be an example to these people that it is possible to do that, right? You don't have to sit here and think about what's the best move to make and I need to talk about my... Who would all these people have these teams? I was just looking at Daniel Prada's Instagram. You know, he talks about all these teams he has. I'm starting to think, like, with all these people, like, they're really not getting that many views in their videos. Daniel Prada gets less views than I do. Daniel Prada gets about the same amount of views on his main channel that I get on my vlog channel. And I'm just going to tell you right now that that is not sustainable income, okay? So, at all. At all. And I do my vlog because I love it. So, he's not making money to live off of his YouTube channel. I was looking at his Instagram... He gets less comments on his pictures on Instagram than I do, okay? And he has hundreds of thousands of more followers than I do. So nobody's looking at his pictures. Nobody's commenting on them. I mean, I went in and I looked. My posting a picture of my, my dog's birthday, Boo Radley's birthday, that picture, like, Boo Radley ratioed Daniel Prada so hard. I mean, I think it got, like, 200 more comments than Daniel Prada's picture's average. So, I don't know why Boo Radley ain't getting requested for sponsorships left and right and skincare launches and things like that, okay? I don't really know how these people make money. I don't know if they live past their means. I have no idea, okay? But... It does make me think that this is partly why they keep their problematic people around because to some degree, these problematic people, even though they're problematic, okay, they have huge followings. Like I just proved the other day that James Charles is still getting 23 million views on his YouTube channel. Okay, he's getting a lot of views on TikTok. He's getting a lot of views on Instagram, even though he's, as Jeffree Star says, one of the most vile people in the entire world. Um... <laughs> Which I don't disagree with, okay? But I think that Jeffree Star is not a great person himself, right? So anyway, um, I just, it's, it's interesting to me. I kind of like sitting back watching all this kind of stuff. I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, I don't make any money off my Instagram. So I don't know. Now I do know that Daniel Prada, like, he does these, um, Instagram stories where he'll have, like, a, a very expensive mirror or he'll redo a bedroom and he'll have a bed on there or something like that and he never discloses that it's a sponsorship he'll never disclose that it's a link which is um violating ftc guidelines just so you know okay and, and they are coming down hard on instagram right now so daniel prada i hope the ftc does not find out that you are one person that consistently does not disclose because if that's the only way that you're making money like i was looking at this tonight it's like you know, Jacqueline Hill is not really making that much money off of her videos at all because she never posts. She's getting less views a month than I am. Jacqueline Hill um, isn't... She closed down Cozy. She closed down her jewelry brand. And she is probably going to close down uh, Jacqueline Cosmetics or Forma Brands is going to close down Jacqueline Cosmetics. But I'm going to talk about that in another video. So the only way that Jacqueline Hill can be making money is off affiliate links. Well, when you start looking at the common thread of these people, like Jacqueline Hill, Laura Lee, Jacqueline Hill's sister, Jacqueline Hill's husband, um, Daniel Prada, all these people, is that they don't disclose that they're affiliate links, okay? But they're massively, like Jacqueline Hill said that she didn't want to be a storefront, and yet tonight she just... She just posted a Lululemon link. But she doesn't want to be a storefront. And she hides behind this. Oh, everybody's asking me. Well, a lot of people ask me about stuff, too. And I don't ever link it with an affiliate link. You know, people ask me where did I get my hat, D Squared or Goran Brothers. Or where did I get my cup, Corksicle. I don't have to link it to make money off of it. You know, I've said maybe I should, right? But if you're going to do it, like, I don't even have a problem with people linking stuff. Just link it appropriately. What's the problem with that? People will still buy it. To be honest with you, if it's somebody that I really, really love, I am more likely to buy the product if they come out and they say, and just so you know, I'm going to make a little bit of money off this, because then I feel like I'm supporting that person that I love too, right? But they got to be so sneaky about it. Well, Daniel Prada for a very long time, and I didn't call him out about this for a long time, because I just, to be honest with you, I mean, if I put Daniel Prada in, in a title of a video, ain't nobody going to watch it. Nobody cares about Daniel Prada. I mean, the reality is Daniel Prada became irrelevant when he stopped dating Joy Graceffa, and that's the 
truth, right? So I didn't talk about Daniel Prado, but the other reason I didn't talk about Daniel Prado was because any time that I, and I didn't talk about Daniel Prado or Joy Graceffa for a very long time, because every time I talked about Daniel Prado or Joy Graceffa, I had a bunch of 12 year olds coming over to my Twitter DMs being like, don't talk about Daniel, we love Daniel so much. Daniel's not together anymore, okay? They done broke up. They're posting videos about dating other people and going on blind dates. And I know y'all are still in love with the genial. They're not getting back together. Okay, they're not. I don't think they were ever together. But you you live in the fantasy world that you want to live in. Okay, there's a lot of fake relationships on YouTube. You, you buy into it. You That was a marketing tactic. Okay, that was a marketing tactic. Just like his friendship with Colleen Ballinger was a market. That was a professional relationship. Okay, so when he gets called out on this fake relationship with Joy Graceffa, what he'll say is, well, it... It wasn't a fake relationship. It was a professional relationship. That's what I'll say, right? Like when he has to come out because people will factually come out and say that know them, that they'll come out finally and say, because all these people are starting to, you know, sing their sing their songs of the truth of the, the world on YouTube. When they come out and they say that Daniel Prada and Joy Graceffa weren't really ever together, it was a fake relationship, he'll say, it wasn't a fake relationship, okay? Maybe the verbiage of boyfriend was wrong. I think I got the verbiage wrong. The verbiage I should have used was that it was a professional relationship. You're damn straight it was, okay? Money was exchanged, and you got a lot of money to live in that house you're living in right now, okay? And you got to produce, escape the night, and all that kind of stuff, right? He's like, I entered the world. This is what kills me when I was watching the video. Like, these are the things that the more times you watch it. Like, people wanted to come to me and say, you are so unfair to Daniel Prada. I have now watched that fucking video six times and taken notes on it, okay? Don't tell me I was unfair to him. I was not unfair to him. I even came out and turned around within an hour about information that I got incorrect and apologized to him. <laughs> within an hour, okay? It took Daniel Prada three months, four months... <laughs> to come out, <laughs> ooh, I have to swallow some air. To come out and speak about these facts, as he refers to them. Okay, it took him four months to come out and talk about something very, very serious. I got a fact wrong in a video and turned around in an hour and did a dedicated video, not monetized, to apologize to Daniel Prada. Okay, so I'm not sure why it took him four months to do that. You know. So anyway, um. But, uh, you know, all these Janiels will come for me and be like, don't talk about Janiel. We love Janiel. You love that professional relationship? Oh, this is what I was going to say that killed me about that video when he was talking about when he entered the world of YouTube through, through his relationship with Joey, that he was introduced to these YouTubers as a writer, or as a producer. I'm like, girl, like seriously? Okay. Let's let's live in reality for a second, okay? Let's live in the real world, okay? You were on Model Mayhem trying to make your, your way up as a model, okay? Dan, uh, Joy Graceffa picked your picture off of somewhere, found you, and thought, oh, this is the perfect person to look like my fairy tale prince in this video that I'm going to do where it shows me coming out, because I uh, this has to be a spectacle, right? So that, you know, all my fans will accept it and love me and things like that. And so... You come out and you do this video with Joy Graceffa and it just happens that you guys are together. Like, that's the fact. That's what happened, right? Okay. And when were you a writer? What TV shows were you writing before this? Before Escape the Night? What books had you written? What movies had you written, girl? <laughs> what what shows had you produced before Escape the Night? Could you, I, I, I want to see your ID, I, IMDB, okay? <laughs> like Heather DeBro in The Real Housewives of Orange County. What's your IMDb, girl? What shows were you producing that you had won awards for? What shows were you producing that you hadn't won award show, show that you hadn't won awards for, okay? I'm just asking, since you wanted to come out and say you entered the world of YouTube as a writer and a producer. Writer and producer of what, girl? Instagram posts? Okay. I mean, we can all claim to be writers and producers then, okay? Because we wrote the we wrote the post and we produced it. Is that what you're talking about, girl? Okay. Listen, I w people wanted to say I wasn't fair to Daniel Prado last night. I was fair to him based on the information that he put up in that shitty-ass video, okay? And if you want to come for me, go watch Adam McIntyre's coverage of it. Because Adam McIntyre slammed him against the wall, deservedly so, okay? And Adam McIntyre is a victim of Colleen Ballinger. So if there's anybody that can speak on it, Adam McIntyre can speak on it. And Adam McIntyre did not fully accept his apology or his, his coming out and talking about it, okay? He side-eyed him through the entire fucking video. So don't come to me and tell me that I wasn't fair with Daniel Prada. I was completely fair, okay? And then Daniel Fa Daniel Prada wants to come out and, um, like, back away from what he said in the video. And I'm going to prove that to you in just a second. But before I get into that, I do want to say this one thing, right? This is where the people that defend these people, like, it, like the links you guys will go to is, like, unbelievable to me, right? 
So I got, I started getting sent this stuff by people on Twitter and on Instagram, all this kind of stuff that people were like, okay, Daniel Prada came out in this video and he said that he had a professional relationship with Colleen Ballinger, that they were never that close. And they're like, well, when Colleen Ballinger was, uh, she was doing the second season of Haters Back Off for Netflix and filming it in Canada, Joey and Daniel were redoing, they were renovating their house, and so they moved into Colleen Ballinger's house. In fact, Daniel Prado was sleeping in Colleen Ballinger's bedroom, right? Not friends, but you're sleeping in her bedroom, okay? And then Daniel Prado redid her whole back backyard as a thank you to Colleen Ballinger for allowing them to come and live in her home, okay? Now, I think that, uh, more than anything, probably proves that you guys were a little bit more close. I mean, there had to have been a conversation. You say you only hung out with her three or four times, okay? But there had to have been a conversation like, can we come and live in your house? Sure, you can come and live in my house. There had to have been a conversation about those things, right? You took care of her dogs and things like that while she was gone. People are, they've already said it. They've already clocked the vlog. You can take the vlog down if you need to, but everybody's got it, you know, copied it and everything like that, right? Okay, so... You moved in to somebody that you had a professional relationship with. Now, this is what kills me about these super fans, right? And yes, you are absolutely fucking super fans, okay? That people are saying things like this on the Reddit threads. Well, it's kind of like an Airbnb. <laughs> or they'll say, my friend asked me to dog sit for her and pay. No, they... She wasn't paying them to dog sit for them, okay? It wasn't like she said, if you watch my dogs, you guys can live in my house. They were living there because Colleen Ballinger, who was a friend of theirs, a good friend of theirs, a best friend, as Daniel Prada had said, that verbiage was wrong. So he wants to retract that now, you know what I mean? So anyway, so uh, they moved into her home, okay? It wasn't an Airbnb. It wasn't like they didn't know Colleen Ballinger. I've never in my life, when I've rented an Airbnb and I've rented many, I have never known personally the people that owned the Airbnb, okay? I might have met them or talked to them on the phone, but I never knew them personally, okay? I didn't take care of their pets, things like that, okay? And if I've ever dog sat for somebody or house sat for them, and I have in the past when I was in my 20s, you know, there was usually like, if you come and dog sit for me or house sit for me, then I will pay you a certain amount of money. That was not the case with the situation. They moved into our house because they were renovating their house. Okay, that's something that a friend does for you, right? Like if we were redoing our condo and my friend Tanya Jean was going to Florida for three months, she'd say, just move into my house. Like, I'm not going to be here. Just you and Alex move into my house. That's not, that's, y'all go to fucking lengths to defend these people, okay? That's literally proof that they were better friends with Colleen Ballinger than he wants to say, okay? So anyway, um, and, and, and I just want to read this comment that was actually on Adam McIntyre's video where he talked about it. So, um, somebody said, um, hold on a second. Oh, God. Somebody sent this to me. Where is it at now? Okay. Somebody said, they were such casual work friends that Colleen let Daniel and Joey live in her house while she was in Canada filming season two of Haters Back Off. They were such casual friends that Daniel redesigned her backyard and put in new sod because their dogs killed the lawn. Casual, casual friends send large flower arrangements for birthdays and birth announcements. He can only make this video now because Joey got Colleen in a divorce. And that was exactly what I said in my video yesterday. And I don't know why. Like, this is the thing that's killing me. Okay, hold on. I gotta blow these candles out real quick. They're cast in shadows like, uh, like Stevie uh, Nicks. Rhiannon rings like a bell through the night and... Wouldn't you love to love her? Players only love you when they're playing. You know, this is the thing for me, right? I love that transition. That was such a good transition. I should be a writer and a producer, shouldn't I? Well, actually, I am a writer. I wrote a book in 2014 called The Before, Now, and After Then that was published. So I can say I'm a writer, okay? Well, he can't now, too, because he wrote and published that stupid show, Escape the Night. But anyway... YouTube Red. Um, read this. Anyway, uh, now, now I don't forgot everything I was going to say about this. What was I going to say? I was going to read them for filth, and now I can't remember. And I got to look back at this. Uh, com okay, this is what I was going to say about this. I don't know why. it w Like, Daniel had to do this whole thing where he said, I said in this video, you know, that uh, Colleen was my best friend. Well, she wasn't really my best friend. We were, we were good friends. Well, actually, we were... Um, we were professional good friends. I mean, it's so good. Like, what, girl? Stumbling over your words much? You're like JoJo Seawall in that Howie Mandel uh, a podcast. You can't get your story straight to save your life, okay? Because you know that nothing you say is going to save your ass. But what would have saved your ass 
would have been you actually coming out and telling the truth, okay? And the truth would have been, yeah, I was really good friends with Colleen Ballinger, and, um, you know, I knew her really well through Joey, and she's one of Joey's best friends, and I haven't seen her in three and a half years because we broke up, and when we broke up, Colleen Ballinger hung out with Joey and kept on hanging out with her and making videos like they just made a video a year ago about all of their inappropriate behaviors that they did in collabs. You can go watch that video. It's still up on Joey's channel. I did. And um, so they are still filming videos up to a year ago and Joey's really good friends with Colleen Ballinger and you know like I just I lost that friendship in the breakup. A lot of people lose friendships in the breakup. In fact I think I said this in my video yesterday right? Okay so that would have been really easy to say that and then you could have even come out and said you know, even though the allegations came out, like, that was not the side of Colleen that I knew. And so it was really hard for me to accept that even though these, these victims were coming out and talking about it, and I had a history of that of my own and whatever, like, it was still really, really hard for me to accept that because that was not the Colleen Ballinger that I knew. And so I just, I, I sat and I thought on it for a while, and then I finally unfollowed her you know, when the Trisha Paytas stuff came out because I thought I can't follow this anymore, you know? Now there's, like, all this stuff out there and I don't know what to do with it. But, you know, like, no, it, it wasn't the right thing to do. I should have been followed her a lot sooner and I shouldn't have continued to support her a lot sooner. Like, that makes a lot of sense and that's probably the truth, right? That's probably the truth. And I think that's understandable. I think, like, people are so afraid to come out and, like, this is something, like, in seven years of covering, like, drama commentary on YouTube, which I don't even necessarily, I, I don't consider this Colleen Ballinger situation drama commentary, right? But since I'm doing commentary on it, one of the things I've noticed in seven years is that a lot of these people have to come out with these very contrived, concocted apologies or concocted stories to explain why they did things at a certain time, right? Instead of just coming out and saying, yeah, I was fucked up what I did. I shouldn't have followed Colleen Ballinger, but I continued to follow her. You know, like, I just, I couldn't get it through my head that this person that I knew and I hung out with could be capable of these things. And yeah, I hung on longer than I should have. I actually just said that not too long ago about Manny. People were like, well, why did you continue to support Manny for so long? Because... I just, there was a part of me that could not believe that Manny was somebody, I was hoping that he would do the right thing. And, and when the day came and I realized nothing that he ever does, you know, is going to get to the point where he stops supporting James Charles. Like, and even though I say that, like, there's still a part of me that's like, please, Manny, do the right thing, right? Like, please, Manny, do the right thing. But, you know, there became a point for me where I was like, I, I've spoken enough about it in videos. Other people have spoken enough about it in videos. Other people, have, his fans are bringing it to him. And he still won't address it. He came out about the Colleen Ballinger thing. I was like, this is just too much. And it's just like, I can't continue to support this anymore. And so I made that decision. I don't know why like that's so hard to say. It's not like they're going to like nail you to the cross about that, right? You know, it's like my friend Tanya Jean says, I can change my opinion from one minute to the next. I followed Manny MUA way too long. I gave him way too many chances. I probably shouldn't have, you know? I'm somebody that likes to give people opportunities for change and, and hope that people will change and grow because I have to want for them the same things I want for myself, right? And so I am somebody that holds on too long and gives people second and ninth and tenth chances. I've said that in videos. You can go fact check that from the very beginning of my YouTube channels, right? Daniel Prada could have come out and said that. There's, there's no shame in it. But the reason that he didn't is because he still supports James Charles. And he knew that, right? Like, he knew putting out this video, he was going to get a, sh a lot of shit about supporting James Charles. He still supports James Charles, okay? Because I went on his Instagram and he is still following him. Now, for all of you out there that want to defend this stance, that, well... Because I saw a lot of comments on his video that people were saying, you can't hold Daniel Prada accountable for being friends with somebody that James Char that is friends with James Charles. I think you guys are missing the point, okay? Daniel Prada is friends with James Charles. I'm not talking about the fact that Daniel Prada is friends with Manny, who is friends with James Charles. Daniel Prada is friends with James Charles. Daniel Prada went to his launch. He was there with Laura Lee. They took a picture together, okay? Daniel Prada has gone out to dinner with James Charles. Daniel Prada has taken uh, Instagram stories, and James Charles has taken Instagram stories of being out at each other's houses with James Charles. Well, I think James, he came to James Charles' house. I don't know that he's been to his house. Okay, like, they've done a lot of social things together, right? It's, I'm not talking about the fact that Daniel Prada is friends with the problematic people that are friends. I mean, I do agree that that's a reach, right? Okay, I'm talking about the fact that Daniel Prada is somebody that has been very close with James Charles. In fact, was so triggered that he couldn't come out and talk about Colleen Ballinger, okay? But James Charles 
who has factual evidence that he has claimed himself in a video of predatory behavior to, to teenage boys, okay? Daniel says he can't come out and talk about it because of how triggered he is, but then he posted a, vi a joke of James Charles' birthday cake. It's still up on his Instagram. I proved that last night, okay? He posted a joke of the birthday cake that James Charles got just this last year that said, Angie did it at my birthday dinner, which was the Toddy Westbrook thing that she said when she was coming out with her video by sister talking about James Charles' behavior and how he preys on straight men. We don't want to talk about that, right? Because Daniel Prada is somebody that plays into the straight fantasy. D Manny MUA is somebody that plays into the straight fantasy, okay? Which, personally, as a 51-year-old gay man that has fought that stigma my entire life, I think it's a really bad look for the gay community when all these people want to just be like, oh, I'm fawning over the straight guy. If a straight guy is going to fuck a gay guy, he's gay, okay? I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry to ruin the fantasy for you guys out there, okay? I want to talk about the down low and all this kind of stuff. Somebody that's on the down low is gay, okay? If somebody is on the down low, that means they are acting like they are straight and they are gay, okay? A man that will fuck another man is gay. He ain't straight, okay? So just get it through your, your mind, okay? And if a straight man has been drinking so much or is inebriated or is on drugs and is willing to do something with you sexually, then you are taking advantage of that straight man, okay? And that is a really bad look for the gay community. So when you want to play into that fantasy of like, oh, kiss me on my cheek or oh my God, I'm so attracted to whatever. It's, it's not about having a crush on a straight celebrity. That is something completely different, okay? Trust. That's something completely different. Okay, when you're like, oh, I think this guy is good looking or something like that. That's completely fair, okay? But to play into this whole fantasy, that's why you won't come out and talk about it, right? Okay, but James Charles, who has serious allegations that he got in a video and he took accountability for, took the video down because he realized he had implicated himself in criminal charges, okay? Saying that he had messaged minors, boys, okay? And you came out in this video and said it was so triggering for you because you had had incidents like that, which I said in my video yesterday, I don't take that from you, okay? That is horrific that you had to go through that. I don't wish that on anybody, right? But you have issues with Colleen Ballinger, but you don't have issues with James Charles, and you even made a joke about it. You were so triggered that you posted the birthday cake of James Charles making fun of the sexual allegations against James Charles. That's how triggered you were about it, right? And people don't have a problem with this. Okay. I take issue with that. I take huge issue with that, okay? You cannot pick and choose. And, you know, it was funny because, well, it wasn't funny, but it was it's sad, actually, is what it was, when Adam McIntyre was reading, like, comments on his live stream as he was reading it and things, or talking about it, and he was watching Daniel Prado's video, and people that had had very similar experiences were saying, like, this is even more why it's important for him to talk about. I said in my video yesterday, I said this would have been such a teaching moment for Daniel Prada. He could have come out and, like, really helped a lot of young people that had gone through this. Or a lot of older people as well, right? And said this was something that I went through and this was very triggering for me. You didn't have to throw it into the last six minutes of a vlog, okay? You could have talked about your experiences with Colleen Ballinger. You could have distanced yourself from James Charles. You could have said, I can no longer have anything to do with him. I was hoping that you were going to do that in the video. I really, like, I went into that video thinking Daniel Prada is going to come out and he's going to, like, just be done. Like, the, the word disavow is the catchphrase of 2023. But he was going to disavow himself from James Charles. Talk about why he distanced himself from Colleen Ballinger. And I was like, maybe he'll, like, when he started saying the thing about being triggered, I thought, well, maybe he'll turn this into a teaching moment, right? Like, that... And I was like, this was such a missed opportunity, right? That you've had these similar experiences to these people that are going through it right now, that you can share with them. You're gonna be okay, I'm okay, I've gotten through this. You know, you, 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 you grow and you change and you, be, you gain strength. Daniel Prada, you're an example of that by what you lived through in high school, okay? But you, you mute that by your friendship with James Charles because if you're so triggered by it, and it's such an issue with you, but then you're throwing up a birthday cake, making fun of sexual allegations towards my, with James Charles towards minors, then it doesn't seem to me like you really do take it that seriously and the kids really aren't that important, right? Like, I, and this is where I have a lot of questions, okay? So this is gonna stop in just a second, hold on. I didn't think this video was gonna be that long. I thought this was gonna be a 20 minute one and done. <laughs> I might post me three one hour videos tomorrow. We'll have to see. So anyway, I wanted to say that. Then I wanted to um, uh, read uh, some comments. So I got this comment on my video 
And somebody said he still he is still friends with James Charles though. He also apologized, but then pinned a comment that says he shouldn't have to apologize, which makes it hypocritical. Which is interesting because he says in his video that he doesn't want to be a hypocrite, which is why he comes out and talks about it to begin with, right? So I went over and I was like, what is this comment that they are talking about, right? And so I went over here and I wanted to look at the comments on his channel, so I did. And um, I found the comment that they were talking about. It's the second comment. Hold on just a second. Um, so the first comment, and this is the pinned comment, okay, by Daniel Prada. It says, oh dear. I'm one of those people who didn't think Daniel didn't really need to speak up about Colleen. Truthfully, I'm deeply annoyed at people attacking both him and Joey over their videos wherein they praised Colleen and scolded Gabby. Gabby Hanna came at them with regards to their professional reputation and moral character. Um, people are coming at D uh, Daniel Prada and Joey Graceffo for their moral character. What don't you understand by that? Okay, They have supported a predator for a very long time. That's their moral character. This is the, this is the, the comment that he chose to pen. Okay? Now, I was fair to Daniel Prada yesterday. I feel like I'm fair in all my fucking videos, okay? But you better strap yourself in and put your depends on uh, Daniel Prada because you're going to be shitting yourself because I've had it with you, okay? That this is the comment that you want to pen in that video that you put out. This shows what a phony ass you are, Daniel Prada, okay? You are phony. You should never have even posted that video yesterday. First of all, you should never have put it in the last six minutes of a video. That shows weakness, okay? That you can't do a dedicated video. Yeah, you had every right to come out with that video against Gabby Hanna and make that hour-long ass video that got you 5.6 million views. Why don't you show the same strength in coming out and talking about Colleen Ballinger because you said this is a really serious situation. You're right, it is. And in fact, I think it's a more serious situation than Gabby Hanna saying that you guys were horrific on the, on the set of Escape the Night. Would you agree with that? Please, please, just let me know in the in the comment sections below, and so I can block you immediately when you say, let me know if you think, okay, that Gabby Hanna coming out and saying that they were horrible on the set of Escape the Night is worse than Colleen Ballinger's allegations of sexual inappropriateness with minors. If you think that, if you live in a world where you think, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't have defended themselves against Gabby Hanna. I made that very clear in my video yesterday, and I'm saying it again. They had every right to, and I think they should have, okay? But you did an hour-long dedicated video, okay? Scraping the floor up with Gabby Hanna, and you put this at the end of six minutes when you have monetized videos with clickbait titles that everybody ran over to your channel because you can't get a view to save your life. And you monetize videos with clickbait titles that are like, oh, losing a friend and this and that where everybody thought you were going to talk about Colleen Ballinger and you never did. So you've monetized off of the pain of the victims, okay? You've monetized the pain of the victims by having people come over and say, addressing issues that you want me to talk about. And then you talk about, uh, t that was the video where you said, addressing comments people want me to talk about. And everybody ran over there thinking you were going to talk about Colleen Ballinger. That's why you left Twitter, right? What was that video about? The fact that you talk about, like, your weight issues and things like that, and that's triggering to other people. You knew people wanted you to talk about Colleen Ballinger. Or how about losing a friend? That wasn't about Colleen Ballinger. Everybody ran over there. You have literally clickbaited titles, okay? And I don't have any issue with clickbaiting titles. But clickbaiting titles so that people will think that you're going to talk about Colleen Ballinger. So you're monetizing videos off of the pain of other people. And then you want to come out in a video and talk about how serious it is. Yeah, it is serious. And, and you, you gained from that seriousness of it, Daniel Prada. You're part of that, okay? Give me a break. You couldn't even put out a dedicated video about the seriousness of this situation. You have sat on your ass for three and four months, right? Knowing the facts. Still supporting James Charles. Making jokes of sexual allegations or sexual impropriety allegations, okay? Making jokes about it. You thought it was okay to post a, a picture of James Charles' cake making fun of, and you did it at my birthday dinner, the Tati allegations of him coming out and talking to minors. Make that make sense to me, please, okay? Where you want us to take you seriously. And now you're snapping back and people in your comments just like you snapped back at people before. So why the fuck did you ever make the video to begin with? Explain that to me, Daniel Prada, okay? Oh, maybe you can't get on here and, and respond because you're already in Europe having dinners and wearing fancy clothes and things like that, right? What did I say in my video yesterday? That when I watched the video for the fourth time, I've now watched it five times, maybe six, okay? When I, when I watched it for the fourth time, what I thought was, oh, I get it. He made this video 
so that he can run off to, to, to the south of France or wherever he's at, okay? And have dinner with his friends and do this photo shoot and hang out and, and dress cute and all that kind of stuff. And he just wants to leave this in the dust. Let's deal with this now so I don't have to deal with it later, okay? So I can come out and disavow Colleen Ballinger in case any other shit comes out about her between now and then. And I can just have fun in Europe. I don't have to deal about with this. That's how much you care about the victims, right? Let's just sweep this under the rug. Let me put out my video so I can just get it done. Let's put it at the end of the six minute thing. That's how serious it is to you, right? Okay, let's see from your comments alone that you put on here, the pinned comment. Let's see how serious it is to you, Daniel Prada, okay? You're a fraud. You are a fraud and a phony. Truthfully, I'm deeply annoyed at people attacking both him and Joey over their videos wherein they praised Colleen and scolded Gabby. Okay, what's interesting to me is that this is your pinned comment, okay? And at the, at the bottom of this... You put on, there are 73 replies, okay? And the number one reply from you is, this is a solid take, thank you. That was Daniel Prada's response to this comment. Okay, truthfully, I'm deeply annoyed at people attacking both him and Joy, Joey over their videos wherein they praise Coley and scold the Gabby. Didn't you come out and address that in your video? Didn't you come out and address your Gabby video? So why can't people say things about it? You brought it up in your video. You brought up that you don't have a problem standing up for yourself, but that you should that you hadn't, and you should have spoke on it sooner, okay? That you should have spoke on it sooner, and it made you a hypocrite if you didn't come out and talk about it now. But this is a, this is a, what'd you say on here? Hold on a second. This is a solid take. No, this take goes against everything you said in your video. So are you taking back what you said in your video? Okay, well, that's what I'm going to title my video. Daniel Prada retracts his statement against Colleen Ballinger because this is exactly what you do in your comment sections, Daniel. And this is what you always have done. Girly girl, you get in a video and you say something and then you get in your comments, okay? And you want to get cute in the comments and say, girly girl, I never said she was my best friend. The fuck you didn't. Away. It was the verbiage that was wrong, right, girly girl? You got the verbiage wrong, okay? Professional relationships, my fucking ass. I'm so over these people. This is why I'm going over reality TV, okay? At least we know them people are snakes, okay? At least we know them people are snakes. Gabby Hanna came at them with, in regards to their professional relationship, reputation, and moral character. Why the hell should they not have stood up for themselves and set the story straight? And what a dumbass thing to do to compare Gabby to Colleen. Why? They both made hour-long videos, garnered millions of views over it. Daniel Prey, that's his most viewed video that's recommended to me on a regular basis, okay? And it was about their relationship with another YouTuber that they had interacted with that had inappropriate behavior. How is that any different to me? Please explain that, okay? If anything, Colleen's situation is much worse. But this is a solid take from Daniel Prey. That's what he says about it, right? Colleen did not go after Daniel and Joey the way that Gabby did. Of course she didn't. She was gaining off of them. Daniel Prada and Joey Graceffa's clean reputation as the cute power gay couple on YouTube, okay, was benefiting Colleen Ballinger greatly. So, of course, she wasn't coming for them. Colleen being shitty person does not uh, absolve Gabby of her many, many wrongdoings. I agree. Or wrongs. I agree with that. And I'll never forget how she treated Jesse Smiles. So vile. I agree. Also, did Daniel help groom or emotionally abuse minors with Colleen? Not that I'm aware of. Was he aware of the creepy extent Colleen was involved with her fans? I don't know. He didn't address that in the video. He could have come out and said, I wasn't aware of that, but he didn't say that. So we don't know that. You can't assume that, okay? He might have known that. He might have been at those viewing parties. I'm not saying that he wasn't, but he might have been at those viewing parties with Trisha Paytas' nudes and things like that. I don't know that he wasn't. I don't know that he was. So don't come over to my video and say, you said that she he was there and he wasn't, okay? I don't know that he was. He didn't come out and say that he wasn't, so we don't know. You can't assume that either any more than I can assume that he was, all right? Also, I'm glad he stayed silent for so long as he did because there were legal issues concerned. Did he say that in his video? No, 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 no. No, he didn't say anything about the fact that he didn't come out because there were legal issues concerned. He came out, this is where you guys are putting legal, you're putting words in his mouth. He came out because, um, he, he, he stayed silent because he was triggered even though he's posting pictures of James Charles' birthday cake, okay, making fun of sexual inappropriate behavior with minors. But he was so triggered, right? He came out because, he didn't come out because he was so triggered and because his team told, who, what team do you have, okay? When you ain't getting no traction on your social media, team of fools is what you got, okay? He didn't say anything about legality in there. Not to mention, well, let me read your whole comment. Also, I'm glad he stayed silent for as long as he did because there are legal issues concerned, not just with the possibility of Colleen suing him for defamation, but also what with the gravity of the situation. What would she sue him for uh, defamation for that he said in this video? He said there are facts out there. There are facts out there, okay? 
What possibly could Colleen Ballinger or Sue Daniel Prada for? For him saying that there are facts out there when there are facts out there? You guys are making so many excuses for people. What was Colleen Ballinger ever going to sue Daniel Prada for? I mean, literally, like, this is the biggest idiot take I have ever seen in my entire life. And Daniel Prada says this is a solid take. Okay. Why'd you make this video, Daniel? Why'd you ever come out and speak about it if you're going to say that this is a solid take and you pin this to your channel? Okay. Trisha alleged that Colleen apologized to her for distributing the nudes, which were behind a paywall, without her knowledge to minors, which is a grave crime. Daniel Prada didn't have anything to do with that. Unless he was at the viewing parties and had knowledge of that. So are you implicating Daniel Prada in being at those viewing parties? I didn't say that. I said he didn't talk about that. But are you saying that? Is this, is this, is this comment that he has penned implicating that Daniel Prada was part of the nudes being sent to minors and that he was at viewing parties of Trisha Paytas' nudes, which are also a federal crime? Because I never said that. And Daniel Prada, as far as I'm known, has no implication in those nudes. So what was Daniel Prada, what was any legality have to do with Daniel Prada ever? There was, n Daniel Prada could never have been involved in this legally unless he had something to do with that. So are you implying that Daniel Prada had something to do with those as well? I never said that, but you are kind of implying that. I don't know why you would pin that comment. I don't think it is wrong to expect that in such situations people associate with the alleged perpetrator let the court of law and relevant authorities speak up because that's what matters more than character witnesses like Colleen's acquaintances speaking up for or for against her. Well, sweetheart, and since you want to uh, pin this comment, Daniel, to you, I think that we're very, very aware that the only reason that you came in and talked about this is because you've been forced into a corner. It's the same reason that you came out and you uh, said that you were getting rid of your Twitter because you got too hot in the kitchen, okay? Because people were literally flooding every tweet that you posted, whether it was about your dogs or about your day or whatever they were flooding it with when you're going to come out and talk about Cole Lane. Okay? So we're talking about the court of public opinion is what we're talking about right now, which might be the only court that Colleen Ballinger has ever held in. So yes, it is very pertinent, okay, to talk about the people that are supporting Colleen Ballinger and her acquaintances and her friends and even her professional uh, friendships that she had that supported her and gained professionally from the relationship of Colleen Ballinger and chose not to speak out about it for a very long time. We are in the court of public opinion. That might be the only court that Colleen Ballinger ever has to go to, Okay? So if we're talking about witnesses in the court of public opinion, Daniel Prada is definitely a witness in the court of public opinion, okay? You're just giving him an out because you're a super Daniel Prada fan is what you are. And probably a Joey Graceffa Daniel is what you are. It's ridiculous to me, okay? Um, I'm not going to touch the James Charles issues right now. Why not? They're relevant. I have proved now in two videos that they're relevant. They're completely relevant. You don't want to touch them. You don't want to talk about them in here because you want to defend Daniel Prada. And to talk about the James Charles incident would prove that he was a hypocrite in that video. That's why you don't want to come out and talk about it, okay? I'm not going to touch the James Charles issues right now, but as for Colleen, why was it terrible for him to say he was close to Colleen back then? It wasn't, but he didn't say that. He said they had a professional relationship. So again, you're, you're taking words of his that he didn't say and you're mixing them up to fit the narrative that you want to append. And he pinned this comment. He pinned a comment about words that he didn't even say in a video. He never said he was close to her. He said he had a professional relationship with her. Did you not watch the fucking video? Because Daniel Prada later comes out to some other people and said, did you watch the fucking video? Slow it down, okay? Did you watch a video on this pinned comment that Daniel Prada pinned? Because I did. He never said that he, he, he had a close relationship with her. What did you say? Why was it terrible for him to say he was close to Colleen back then? He didn't say that. He said they had a professional relationship that he only hung out with her three or four times. A girly girl, you got it wrong on your pinned comment here. How proud you must be. I would love to have a pinned comment um, on a Predator Protector's YouTube video where they come out and do the absolute wrong thing. That would be my proudest fucking moment in the world. Do y'all think abusers are just... And since Daniel Prada pinned this comment on his video, you can blame Daniel Prada for this, not me, okay? You left a comment on a public platform anyway, so there you go. Do y'all think abusers are just trolls who live in the sewers and then jump unexpecting people? No, unfortunately. No, I actually think that abusers are people that manipulate the people that they are abusing, and they also manipulate the people around them to believe that they are good people, to get them to support them so that other people believe that they are good people, okay? Which is why, when you know that somebody is a self-proclaimed predator or a perpetrator of other people's abuse, that you come out and you speak against it, okay? No, I don't believe that they're just trolls that jump from the sewer. Okay, we're not all idiots out here. 
some of us can understand, okay, that they have manipulated the people around them as well. And Daniel Prada is coming out and saying in his video that he doesn't want to support somebody that indirectly is hurting other people even if he's not involved in it. That would implicate James Charles, okay, who he still follows as of five minutes before I was making this fucking video, all right? Seriously. No, unfortunately, they can make up a respectable reputation and gain friends, which is a frightening reality. Yeah, friends like Daniel Prada that's supporting James Charles, but you don't want to talk about James Charles, right? Okay. What a black and white thing to assume that abusers never have good friends or fans. And to make, you know, serial killers do too, right? Serial killers have families and friends and things like that. And then afterwards, people come out and go, I had absolutely no clue that they were a serial killer and they were, you know, chopping up people and putting them in holes late at night and things like that, right? Israel Keys, um, you know, that was a serial killer. Uh, you know, all, John Wayne Gacy. I mean, there's not, I mean, listen, I got a true crime fucking book club. Don't come for me, okay? Every serial killer out there, the BTK killer had a wife. Every Every serial killer had a daughter. We read her book. It was horrific. It was stupid. It was... Anyway. You probably... Anyway. Okay? Every serial killer out there in the world has people that say, I never knew that they were a serial killer. Okay? But here's the difference between that, right? It's not like they knew they were a serial killer and they continued to choose to stand by them. Almost literally every friend and family member of a serial killer, when they know that they're a serial killer, like completely distances himself and has nothing to do with them, okay? Yet James Charles' friends know that he's a perpetrator and that he has, uh, that he has uh, hurt many people. And he even came out in a self-proclaimed video and admitted to that. And they still support him. That's the difference, right? That's the difference to your opinion here, okay? That I just proved you wrong. It is kind of victim blaming to imply that. It is? Okay. Imagine um, if you were in that situation and someone told you, oh, you couldn't have been abused by XYZ. They have so many good friends. As if there was something wrong with the abuse to have been harmed by such a popular person. Well, actually, this you're proving my point right here in saying that James Charles and Colleen Ballinger had so many good friends around them and that their friends are continuing to support them, which is saying that they're good people. You actually just proved my point, right? So these people supporting them should probably not support them anymore because then that takes away from the victim stories. It takes away from the victim's power of people that will believe them. That's where the whole power differential comes in. You totally understand this because you just said it's in your comment that Daniel Prada penned. I'm just tired of fans' needs to, to deify and idolize these personalities. I like Daniel a lot, obviously. But the man is not my friend, and he shouldn't have to feel like he's bound to be the public's mouthpiece. Well, he chose to come out in a video and address it. He didn't have to do that. And Daniel Prada says, this is a solid take. Thank you. Well, of course you think it's a solid take, because it, uh, it, it's uh, protecting you. And then, hold on a second. Where's the next comment? I sort of got, every time I go in and out of this video, now I got to go back out of it, because every time I go in and out of this video, I don't know why it does this on this video, okay? It takes this comment away from it. I don't know why it does that. Here it is. Now it's back on here again. Why do, if you re, I'm going to read the second comment on here. Watch this and tell me if this is not the weirdest shit ever, okay? When you refresh the comments, this comment disappears and it goes way down. To like, I don't even know how he does that. I, he must have somebody at YouTube because he's a writer and a producer. But I don't know how you do that. But the second comment says, why do you associate with people who are friends and support people like James Charles, okay? It has 386 comment or likes on it. The first, number one, com uh, tw uh, pinned by, J uh, by, uh, by James Prada, <laughs> by Daniel Charles, the first comment has 104 likes on it, okay? And 75 replies, which are not in favor of Daniel Prada. This one has 360, uh, hold on, 386 likes on it and 51 comments, okay? That says, why do you associate with people who are friends and support people like James Charles? And so all these people go on right now, and I read this comment in my video yesterday, and all these people are saying things. So anyway, when you go way down here, it's interesting because Daniel Prada comments on it. And he says, apparently you didn't watch the video or read the description. Maybe let's watch it on half speed. The words can click for you. Oh, girly girl. You want to get cute in your comment where you just came out and said, um, hold on. I know I have a chair and a plant and Fernalicious is up above me. But just imagine there's like a gray wall behind me. Um, like... I really need to come out and talk about something serious because, like, this is really a serious situation, and I've sat on my ass for four months and gone to Predator Paint launches and posted birthday cakes, making fun of sexual inappropriate behavior with minors, and all the facts have been out there since Adam McIntyre made his video, and the Trisha Paytas nudes came out, and 
this is like really serious and we need to talk about this and I don't want to be a hypocrite anymore. So I'm going to really talk about this and, and I'm going to do better. Like I'm going to really do better because I, I really believe in standing up for what's right and the children. <sighs> so Whitney Houston song. I believe the children are our future. Daniel pray to James Charles lead the way. That is a sad future, okay? That is a sad future. So there's your video, singing a sad song about, oh, I need to be so serious in this video. This is, this is a really serious video and yeah, like this is so serious and like, I didn't have a I didn't have a good friendship with Colleen Ballinger. It was just a professional relationship where we lived in her house and and Joey who ran me around like an assistant and everybody in, on YouTube says that I was basically just his assistant even though we acted like we were in love for six years and all the fans bought it up and the fans were really in love with Janiel so we had to keep the relationship going because the Janiels loved loved us and so that's why we still keep it going to this day even though we've been broken up for 16 years and we still. Uh, raise dogs together, even though we've been broken up for 22 years. And But anyway, you know, Joey, um, he gained a lot off of his uh, his friendship with Colleen. I was never friends with Colleen Ballinger. We had a, a we had a, a semi um, part time. Well, I don't even know if I can say that a semi. I don't know. PRN call me when you need me. Professional relationship. I think I only maybe spent um, 17 minutes with her my entire life. Get the fuck out of here, okay? Then you want to come back with this comment on this video and you want to say, apparently you didn't watch the video or read the description. Maybe let's watch on half speed. The words can click for you. Now that's the Daniel Prada that I know, girl. That's the Daniel Prada that I know, okay? I watched your fucking video five or six times. I heard what you said. You said you didn't want to be associated with people and you knew that you had socially supported people that had problematic behavior and yet you're still following James Charles. You need me to slow it down for you, Daniel? I watched your video probably fucking more times than you did and took notes, okay? I heard every fucking thing you said. I still have the notes in my video or my in my notes app, okay? About what you said dictated on my phone. I sat here and watched your video and I paused it and said, and I, and I will do better. Do better. Disassociate yourself from James Charles. He's a predator just like Colleen Ballinger. In fact, the allegations against James uh, Charles, okay, were substantiated by James Charles, who suffered no consequences, hasn't had anything bad happen to him, is getting 23 million views on YouTube a month, and it just had a launch of a new brand, okay? But you don't have a problem with that. Okay, so let's read some of the comments after this. These people out here paying your bills, be more humble. I agree. Somebody said, wow, I was about to defend you since the situation is nuanced. We all love people who make mistakes and can decide to forgive them due to affection and shared history. But you essentially calling someone an idiot, telling them to watch at half speed. This is what will cause my unfollowing. Be a bit more humble, man. People watching your videos is what keeps up your extremely pr privileged lifestyle. Your friends and acquaintances are none of my business so long as you don't justify their offenses, but belittling comments against those who watch and support you, now that says a lot about your character. You got to the top and couldn't help but become the associated stereotype. I'm out. Then somebody said, aren't you following James Charles on Instagram? Uh, somebody said, uh, hold on a second, so why does he follow James? Um, and it goes on and on and on. Let's read the description box really quick, okay? Just to give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's see where he addresses James Charles in the, the description box. Since the question was about James Charles. Since he wanted to call somebody out and call him an idiot for not reading the description box or watching on too slow speed. I watched it, okay? I took notes on it. You never once mentioned James Charles. You said that you had socially supported problematic people and you weren't going to do that anymore because you wanted to do better. You still follow James Charles on Instagram. He is still one of your friends. You went to his launch party. You supported his brand, okay? You've gone out to dinner with him. You've gone to his birthday parties. You've associated with him socially. He is not just a professional friend. You cannot say that, okay? 
You've hung out with James Charles on a more social level and a more intimate level than you ever have with Colleen Ballinger. So you can never come out and say that about James Charles that you had a professional relationship. That's an absolute fucking lie. Let's read this description box, shall we? Hi guys, and welcome to Sunday's vlog. It's been busy at the house since returning from Montana, and I'm so excited for all the new upcoming reno re re renews at the house. My friend Eric has a new podcast, and I was guest a guest coming out in two weeks, so make sure to go support him. Had dinner and caught up with the boys, and we just discuss my stance on a former friend's dangerous behavior. Oh, well right here you said she was a former friend of yours. So for all the people saying that he wasn't her friend, you said in the description box right here, my stance on a former friend's dangerous behavior starts at 2501. Oh, you validated right in here that she was your, that she was your friend. But in the video you said she was never your friend. She was only a professional friend. But right here you say, oh, another one of those uh, verbiage. Does the, girl, you need to get hooked on phonics because you cannot get with the verbiage. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you right now. To those affected, I am so sorry. And like, I totally hope that you are able to heal and grow. You deserve so much better. To everyone who follows along my journey, thank you for your patience, feedback, and kindness. I will do better moving forward with whom I blindly support, blindly support, how about you support with your eyes wide open, and align with socially, James Charles, and be more forthright about speaking on things that may not directly affect me, but reflect on my character due to my place in this, this industry. Okay, see you next Wednesday with a new video. I hope it's about James Charles, since you want to say you're going to come out and do better. I hope that that video is talking about how you are no longer going to have any contact with James Charles and that you are going to unfollow him on Instagram. And by the time that video comes out that you've unfollowed him on Instagram and that we never see another picture of you with him, that we never see you in another launch with him or what you said in this video about Colleen Ballinger is absolute fucking bullshit. Okay. And it was performative because you were pushed in a corner to come out and talk about Colleen Ballinger. All right. And for the person that you said to in the comment section to read your fucking description box, I read your description box and you owe that fan or that person or whoever took the time to watch your stupid ass video an apology because I read your video and the only thing that it references in there was the fact that you actually were friends with Colleen Ballinger okay so cut the shit and get honest with your audience I think they deserve better and you need to start doing better that's all I have see you guys tomorrow love you so much bye